Perceive, process, perform. Do you need inspiration for your practice? Or do you simply need to practice inspiration? With this series, we aim to do both. Give us 15 minutes and we'll give you practice inspiration. Dr. Mulinar is founder of the Dental Design Academy, a postgraduate program in prosthodontics, lectures internationally on restorative dentistry and implantology, and is a published author on aesthetically related dental topics and maintains a private practice in the Netherlands. Welcome, my name is Marta Molenaar. I am a dentist from the Netherlands. I'm a prosthodontist and uh, today I'm going to talk about a topic I really like that's facially generated treatment planning. I think nowadays a lot of people like to have aesthetic driven treatments but I think it's very important to also bring into the functional aspect of our treatments because aesthetics and function they go together and that's the beauty of a facially generated treatment plan. You're bringing the face of the patients into the dentition and trying to make both work. Because I have a lot of patients seeking my help on the aesthetic field of dentistry. And for example, what you're looking now are patients who are looking for an answer to their problems. They have teeth that chip off, they have uh, diastemas, uh, they have problems with their aesthetics, and they're asking me, can you solve that for me? So we have to find out what is wrong and what is the principle behind the failure of their dentition. But we're not only treating teeth, there's a whole person also connected to the teeth and we treat the whole face of that person as well. So it is crucial to what we do. To give you a little bit of insight, what we do in this 15 minute presentation is we make an analysis of the face and to look into if the teeth are correlated in a correct way to the face of that patient. Let's go to one of my patients, which I'm treating at the moment. And this guy came to me with the question, Martijn, my teeth are too short. Can you lengthen them for me? Well, I've seen a lot of cases treated in a way that colleagues try to lengthen those teeth and teeth are breaking. Veneers are chipping, teeth get mobile, we get a lot of problems because we have to understand the fun functional background of those cases. And so we have to bring in the envelope of function of that patient into an aesthetic treatment plan. So we start analyzing the face of a patient. And what do we do? Well, if we analyze an aesthetic uh, treatment plan, the first step is to look into where are the hard tissues. Where is the bone of the upper and lower arch positioned related to the face of our patient? So that's the first step we take. The second step is, okay, where are the teeth oriented in the mouth of the patient? Are they in the correct position or not? Do we have to alter them or not? Do we use surgically? Uh, procedure to do that or do we use orthodontic treatments to do that so that's the second step in planning first the heart tissue framework the upper and lower arch then within the arch how are the teeth positioned so position of the bone and the teeth and last but not least is where is the soft tissue positioned because when we smile and when we function we see soft tissue which gives us a pleasant smile so those three steps are crucial in facially generated treatment planning. And when you start doing this, you will realize that a lot of things can be altered for our patients, which make them look better and give a better function for those patients. Because if we solve envelope of function problems, let's say overbite, overjet problems, patients feel more comfortable function in their mouth. So back to our case. When we look at this guy and we start treatment planning this guy with a quick scan, of course we look into how is the teeth divided in three equal parts. Well, the mid-facial and the lower part should be more or less equal. Of course you have a spread, it's never a hard number. But within the spread, the mid-face and the lower face should be like 50-50%. Well, in this case, that's okay. So that we don't have to alter that depends maybe on the vertical dimension of occlusion of where the uh, excess of the maxilla problem lies into but he doesn't have that so that's good the second thing will be the lip nose unit why do we look into the lip nose unit well it says something about the support of the upper arch of our lip if we have good lip support we have a nice red fullness of our lip and that's more beautiful so if that upper arch is deficient, you won't see that much of 
redness of the upper lip, so we have to alter that. Sometimes we have excess of our upper arch, which gives a different problem. So we make our analysis and try to look into those cases. Here we can see that. A male and female are living di different, it's between 90 and 100 degrees lip nose unit angle. But if we do our analysis on those cases, of course we look also in the bony aspect, the skeletal analysis, and we bring those two analysis together. I've seen a lot of cases, and in the Netherlands we are famous for our class 2 malocclusions, that I see a beautiful woman with a perfect profile, and have a class 2 malocclusion. That's a big problem nowadays, because if we want to fix that dentally, we should do orthokinetic surgery, we should advance the maxilla, alter the uh, mandible, and alter the maxilla, and that gives problems in their face, because she's beautiful. So that's a struggle. So if we try to alter aesthetics, we have to know what we're doing. And that is crucial, I think, for solving cases. So we look into where's the bone and how is the soft tissue supported. But the profile of the patient is, is the most important of the two. <coughs> so we did our analysis, then we go to our uh, skeletal analysis. But if you do the facial skeletal analysis, <coughs> the profile of our patient is the most important. So we look into the profile of a patient, then determine where do we position our teeth and then we go to occlusion to bring those functional items into play. So heart tissue framework, first position of the lower and upper arch, and then where are the teeth positions within the arch. Of course, on those x-rays you can do your measurements. And also as a prosthodontist, I'm not trained in ortho, but you can do a quick scan to see where teeth should be positioned. If you take the Frankfurter horizontal plane, and dry 90 degree drop down lane, of, uh, you can see that the mid facial part of your anterior teeth should be positioned on that line. And what we can see here is a little bit backwards. So we can bring our anterior teeth more forward. So that gives us a little bit space in solving this problem. If we look to the lower arch and you draw a line from the frontal horizontal line onto the heart poconium, the anterior teeth should be on that line on one millimeter before that line. So also here we have some space. And when you start intruding a lower anterior, lower anterior teeth rotate and you can restore them in a proper overjet overbite. So this is the analysis we, we make. We look into the profile of a patient, are the hard tissues supporting the soft tissues, and then we look where are the teeth positioned and do we have to alter things. Of course, we have to look into the soft tissue problem as well. We can see here, because you have a dysfunctional envelope of function, he's wearing his teeth out from the inside, giving a steep anterior position of the upper teeth. We have to alter that, and that matches the x-ray, because those anterior teeth were a little bit behind the ideal position, so they have to be brought outward. When we do that, we easily can restore the inside of those teeth and you'll be minimal invasive as possible. Good. What about soft tissue position? Well, this picture says it all, because when you draw a line from the cuspid to the cuspid, a horizontal line, you can see the differences where the soft tissue levels are at this point. You can see, due to the wear he has, the attrition with his teeth in the anterior zone, teeth start to erupt, and then to alveolar eruption, and bring the gums and the bone with it. So, during that process, soft tissue comes down, and his teeth are getting shorter and shorter. And that's what he's seeing. That's his request. My teeth are short, can you lengthen them for me? But he's functioning in a protrusive manner, so if I lengthen his anterior teeth, they will chip. So the, the treatment plan will be different in this case. Also in the lower interiors, they erupt. So this is the problem to him. So when we do the analysis, heart tissue framework, position of lower and upper arch, we look into heart tissue arch ejector, where is the bone positioned and the teeth in the arch of our patients. 
And then we look into sub-tissue position because that is crucial to everything we do. When the patients are talking and smiling, we see sub-tissue display and that should be in harmony with the face of our patients. So sub-tissue architecture, we can see here we have a problem. There are two solutions to this problem. One is a crown lengthening procedure, a surgical approach, but then if you restore the case, you're not anymore in enamel, which results in bonding problems. The best treatment for such a case, in my opinion, is I think an orth orthodontic approach. Repositioning of the teeth in an ideal position, so then you can minimal invasively restore such a case. So this is facially generated treatment planning. You look to the face of a patient, do the analysis, and then look in the mouth of the patient what the problem is and how we can solve that minimal invasively. And moving teeth with ortho is a reversible process. So bringing them back into position and then restore them, in my mind, makes the most sense. So that's what we do now with him. An understanding of the envelope of function of our patients and Connecting that to the problems we see will impact the aesthetic outcomes of our cases. So it's not only a smile design what we make, it's a 3D planning of our cases. Aesthetically, but also functionally, that it will as a durability through the years. I think that is important. So knowledge of anatomy of teeth, what you can do with them, what is, n what is within normal limits, is crucial for planning cases. Of course, you have exceptions of the rule, but you catch 80, 85% of the group if you use the average numbers of cases. Good. As a clinician, I think we should envision the outcome of our treatment. When a patient comes to my office, I think it's my task to, to make a treatment plan in my head already to know where I'm going. Then I have to figure out what are the problems? Of course, we have requests of our patient, but we have to find out structural problems, biology, functional issues. I think that's crucial for an end result. Of course, economics plays a role. A patient has, of course, to pay for treatment, but we have to discuss that with the patient. When we find out what the problem is, we should ask ourselves how we're going to deal with that problem. And when we figure out multiple ways to deal with them, then we go to our patient and discuss the treatment plan. I think these four steps are crucial in explaining a patient what needs to be done, and you can really point out every issue and explain it to the patient what's happening with their teeth, so they understand the treatment plan we're suggesting them for them. Of course, there are also multiple options, but there's also one best one. So, facially generated treatment planning starts with Aesthetically and functionally position anterior teeth in the correct uh, position. Then determine ideal anatomy of tooth and teeth and molars, length width ratios, contour, etc. And then determine, okay, if soft tissue is in the correct position, yes or not, or do we have to alter that? This is the sequence I ran through with every case, although I have sometimes to treat one implant case in the aesthetic zone, but it's a step-by-step -step approach which you can explain to your patients and they most of the time are willing to undergo the treatment because they understand the problems uh, behind it. So that was it for today, facially generated treatment planning and uh, maybe we see each other in the future. Thank you for your attention.